Hey everyone, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and as we know the 3000 series of graphics cards are here from Nvidia and we thought we'd take it maybe one step a little bit further by water cooling it but with a slight difference. Let's do this. Never worry about Wi-Fi again. With the fastest Wi-Fi ever and four times the connection capacity so you can connect more, do more, and stream more simultaneously. Orbi Wi-Fi 6 from Netgear. So what is the whole point of this video? Well, what you find is we've got a system next to us and we wanted to basically air cool it, typically like someone would. We've got a large CPU cooler on there and we've got the Zotac RTX 3080 Trinity. Yes, we're gonna ignore all the kind of, you know, speculation about it being a terrible card. It simply isn't, and we have debunked that. So go and check out that video. But what we've got here today is a water block from AlphaCool that fits that exact card due to the PCB layout and design. But more importantly, we've got this product here from MP5 Works, which essentially is actually gonna, in theory, take away the heat from the backplate of the GPU. Because while this is gonna call, sort of cool down, I guess, the main part of the card, there's still some aspects of a graphics card, especially with 3080, that maybe don't fall under the conventional way of cooling down a graphics card. And of course, I'm talking about things like memory. So when it comes to cooling down a graphics card, you are gonna find that a water block is definitely gonna do its job when it comes to the actual GPU core itself. But when it comes to the memory, there's nowhere really for that heat to escape. That's why you're gonna find with cards like this that are very, very large, it does have a triple fan cooler design on there to assist in cooling down, not just the GPU core, but also the memory as well. The problem that you've got there is heat rises and generally speaking it's going to end up behind the graphics card or in this case if you have it horizontally it's going to be on top of the graphics card on the back plate so how do you then get away with sort of getting the heat away from there and transferring it away well of course you could put many fans in the front and across the top and really try and get that whole airflow inside the case going but mp5 works actually believe they have something well a little bit better to do that for you so with a conventional GPU block, generally you'd find it's gonna cover over the whole PCB. Now, it's pretty hard to imagine this because this GPU looks so large, the PCB actually ends about here. So there is quite a lot of the card that's, I guess really taking up quite a lot of room, which might be unnecessary. I'm sure Zotac have done their own kind of research and development and they have found that there's a, you know, a need for it. So it does make you start thinking, well, why is there need for a cooler to be that big on a card if the PCB is so much smaller? Well, that's where my thinking goes to temperatures and how it's actually trying to cater for them temperatures that maybe you you don't really know about. Obviously, you can open up things like HW Monitor and it's gonna tell you the GPU core temperature, but that doesn't really paint the full picture. And when you look at a GPU block like this, you can see it is actually, well, dramatically smaller than the conventional card that we've got here. Then when you take a look at things like the back plate, which we actually joked about because based on the size of the card, it's probably the smallest back plate we've ever seen for a GPU. So with all the heat going onto here, because this is gonna be sitting on top, where can that heat really escape to? And that's where these come in. So this is the product and basically it's called the BPC or backplate cooler. And what it really sets out to do is to try and take that heat away. So it would just simply go into the existing loop that you have in your system, or if you are building from scratch, you could just put this in. It does have to run in parallel and we've sort of talked through that as we actually get everything built up. As you can see, it comes in two different variants. So we do have acrylic and we also have the acetel. So depending on the sort of look that you're going with your system, obviously one is gonna be better for you than the other. For instance, if you're looking at something with, I know, brightly colored pastel fluid, you're probably gonna be more inclined to go for this. If you wanna go for something maybe a little bit more industrious, this is gonna be the one for you. Straight away, I mean, I can tell that these feel extremely solid. The quality feels pretty damn good overall. And you will find that, I don't know, when I first saw it, it had a slightly different way of mounting it to what I kind of expected, but I can see why they've gone ahead with that. Purely because to mount this, they have to, in a roundabout way, make a one size fits all solution because every GPU is different. I mean, if we take the Zotac Trinity and look at the size difference between that and another card from another brand, for instance, MSI with their Gaming X Trio, it was absolutely huge. Whereas the Zotac Trinity is more kind of slimline, but a lot longer. So how do you go about making a product that's gonna fit everything and fit it well and do the job that it's set out to do? So we have actually taken some base figures of kind of how this setup performs. We carried on with a loop of 3D Mark times by Extreme, just so we could get some base temperatures. We then looked at moving up and overclocking it a little bit. And yes, in certain circumstances, we were able to hit over two gigahertz. And now what we wanna do is strip this down, add a custom loop in, see how that performs, 
then put the BPC on and see what kind of different results we get. And I'm expecting something pretty damn good. So before we get started sort of doing the custom loop side of things, I want to talk about the accessories that actually come with this because some of the things you might look at and think this maybe looks a little bit complicated, but it couldn't actually be simpler. So to start with, to hook it actually onto the back plate of the GPU, you do get these little clips with a slight sort of bungee on there. And we found from our own testing that it's actually the right kind of length for this card. Obviously, if you do need something a little bit bigger, then they do give you some extra cord in there as well. Again, going back to cards like the MSI Gaming X Trio, you are going to find that maybe it just needs that little bit more because it's a slightly bigger product. Again, MP5 Works are trying to find something that can cater for everyone's needs, no matter what kind of card you have. You will also find that you get your tubing here, and I love what they've done with this, purely because it doesn't look like tubing. As you can see, it is quite small, so it's a 4mm uh, outer diameter, 2.5mm inner, and it actually looks like a cable as opposed to tubing. So if you can imagine your GPU PCI Express uh, cables, if you were to have these at the top, there's nothing stopping you cable tying this to that, and it would just look like an extra piece of cable. I really like the fact that they've done that. If you need to do any sort of tweaks, modding and things like that, they do give you some extra heat shrink in there, so you've got one for each cable. And then you obviously get your fittings as well, which screw down directly into the block, and then your standard fittings to tie it in with the rest of your loop. You do get the cable ties and everything so that you can make things look neat and tidy. And the thing, the thing that I really do love is the fact that this is 60 centimeters, which is more than enough, thinking where your GPU placement is, whether it be horizontally or vertically, you're gonna find that you can actually kind of route this through the back of your system and if you're anything like me, I don't care what this side of the system looks like. As long as it looks nice, neat and tidy on this side, I'm fine with that. So there's nothing stopping you putting that back there, putting in T-junctions, putting in all sorts of fittings and having an absolute mess if you really want to do that and you're that way inclined. As long as this side of the system looks great. And I really like the fact that, yeah, you can make this look absolutely amazing. You're going to see all that as this video progresses. The instructions are there as well, which does, I've looked for it. It makes everything sound really, really clear and really easy to follow as well. So uh, I guess really we need to get started, get a custom loop in here, do some more testing on conventional custom loop stuff. Then we can move on to the BPC and see what kind of differences we get at stock in terms of the temperatures. And also if it gives us that little bit more extra headroom when it comes to overclocking. So we've now got the system set up with a full custom loop in there. We decided to go for, with soft tubing purely for the standpoint of it's a lot easier to build, didn't take as long. And we wanna try and keep this video as clear and concise as possible. We did to, we kind of decided to jazz it up a little bit. So we have put some Mayhem's pastel yellow fluid in there, just so you can see how a conventional loop would look. We're trying to make this, I guess, as similar to what you guys would actually go out there and do yourselves. Now, you can also see that we have already got things running and uh, we are just keeping it on a loop with 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme. This is an 8K monitor from Dell, so uh, you will find that, yes, it looks very, very small, but that is actually performing at 4K. So really, we are taxing the 3080 pretty highly. Um, when we look at the sensor tab in GPU Z, you can see temperatures are spiking up. You can see the actual um, amount of power being used by the card is spiking up as well. And we just wanted to get some base figures again. So we've got something to compare from air cooling over to conventional kind of custom loop water cooling. We are also going to overclock it a little bit and we can show you them results as well, just so you can see sort of, you know, what I guess a custom loop can do in terms of giving you that sustained boost level when it is underwater. So uh, yeah, let's show you that and then we can actually look at installing the BPC.
So it's been many, many hours since we actually kind of ventured out on doing the main tests that we wanted. As you saw, we have done our air cooling tests. We have done our water cooling tests. Now we've done everything with and without the BPC. And we actually took a few moments putting the backplate cooler on there, taking it off again, putting it on, taking it off. And there were some key things that we actually found out with this. The main ones, I guess, come down to stability, especially when you're looking at overclocking. We were actually able to increase the overclock, especially when it came to the memory, while using the BPC. Maybe it was just cooling down that backplate that little bit better that it allowed the memory just that little bit more headroom. You will also find that because we did increase the memory, the power draw on the card went a little bit up and down. And this, in our own theories, is mainly down to what we believe the type of memory that is being used on these cards and what happens when it does get too high. It tries to balance it out and bring it back down a bit. And consequently, that affects things like your power. We did also notice, because we have been testing this over a multiple uh, over multiple days, that power draw, especially on the Zotac card and the limiting factor being the voltage regulation, the actual power limitations of the card, we could only really test upon what we're getting in terms of the thermal relationship to how the product is working with the actual graphics card itself. So we've got the screenshots here. We'll put them up on the, on the screen as well. And really you can see the key differences. So yes, we had better stability with the BPC. We also found because we did put a thermal probe inside, we found that the temperatures for the most part with the BPC were sitting between the backplate and the actual PCB of the graphics card at around 44, creeping up towards 45 degrees. Without the BPC, it was well over 50. And the problem that we had there, because we had such instability issues without the BPC on there, we found that it kept crashing and consequently the temperature had a chance to come back down again. If we didn't have them BP, if we didn't have the issues without the BPC in terms of the temperature, I'd actually hazard a guess that that temperature of around 50 degrees would just keep climbing and climbing and climbing. There was one point where we actually got 58 degrees. So it goes to show straight away that with the BPC, it's having a huge, and I mean huge impact, on just the temperatures around the backplate of the graphics card. We're talking sort of, you know, 10 to 12 degrees, Some in some cases even more than that. So what's the key takeaway here? I mean, if you are going to custom loop your system and you are trying to, I guess, find that magical overclock and try and get a little bit further, the BPC is definitely going to help you. And considering the price of it compared to just the standard water, plot, water block with a backplate on there, it's not really that much more expensive to add this in and straight away you can see the results that we were able to get. Now, I know eagle eye viewers out there are going to be sort of going, well, this is in a synthetic benchmark. This is in this particular system. We have the fans pretty modestly set at around anywhere between 800 and 1000 RPM. And that's a key thing I want to let you guys take away with you because we tested this, I guess, worst case scenario. If you're gaming, yes, you're going to find that the levels of boost that you're getting, which with the BPC, it was a more sustained level of boost at around 2145. But in gaming, it's going to go up and down, up and down. Within 3D Mark, you're going to find it's a sustained level. And just with the BPC alone, we found that that sustained level of boost was constant. There was no variation. It wasn't up and down or anything like that. So in my eyes, I would recommend this product. And you've got to admit, especially the acrylic version with the yellow kind of thing that we've gone with here, it looks pretty, pretty fantastic. I mean, it beats the boring backplate that you generally have. So it's great because it can be used as an aftermarket product. So if you already have a loop, we did show you, it's easy to install. You don't have to dismantle your loop to a certain degree. Obviously we've used quick connects and, and things like that, but how hard is it to drain and refill a system? If you're doing a fresh system, it's gonna be even easier because you can do everything on the GPU block, on the GPU itself, put it in, do your system, do your loop, and away you go. So yeah, I think MP5 Works are actually onto something here and I'm actually really interested to see what's gonna come next from them. And I actually invite anyone who's gonna buy this product, let me know in the comments section below once you've bought it, what kind of results you're getting because that's only really going to paint a much bigger picture and while we tested on the 3080 i think people are really going to see great results on other cards as well especially you know even older cards that sometimes didn't have the greatest thermal dynamics to them so yeah really excited to see what you guys are able to do with this product uh you can check it out mp5works.com and uh yeah let me know how you get on until next time hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did you know exactly what to do and i will see you in the next one see you later guys bye bye